applaud you, you know, you're, um, you know, you were great, or, you know, I kind of, I thought he felt uh, some type of connection to him, kind of like that was his, his, um, his equal, I guess you would say, and, um, yeah, because he says, um, I just wanted to let you know that it, that, um, that I sent them to your apartment. Mm-hmm. This was all my, so there was really five guys. Yeah. So he was the last one, and he was like, you know, it was this was my doing. I'm sorry that I messed up your, your, yeah. your wedding. Yeah, because I, I did, for me at least, I did uh, sense the sincerity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that he was, you know, actually sorry for ruining his wedding, and um, kind of like, uh, you know, I apologize for for killing you when they were just supposed to, you know. Yeah, I think uh, him, the I, I really like the 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 relationship, I guess, and just a little bit of screen time that they had together, but you the way know, that they play off yeah. each other. It was really good because it's it, it, it's interesting when he's uh, when Eric goes after the fourth guy. Mm-hmm. Do you remember his name? Uh, uh, oh, Skank. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um, Skank is, a, is supposed to be the last one. Mm-hmm. And um, no, I re- I really like when uh, Eric comes into and they show like the big huge uh, table shot oh, yeah. of everybody loading their weapons and mm-hmm. he just kind of strolls in like it's no big deal this is what I was going to talk about he um so Eric just sits up on the table and he says you know what I only want him yeah and, then and that's kinda, it he gives them all an out basically saying I just want this one guy yeah you don't have nothing to, else has to happen uh huh which he's referring to Skink. That's yeah. what I wanted to know his name for. And um, and Top Dollar, Top Dollar is yeah. like, no, you can't have him. He's mine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, and then they, and he says, uh, the crow says, oh, well, thank you. I guess you've chosen your side. Mm-hmm. Now let's see you enforce it. Mm-hmm. And then they all fire on, on him at once. Yeah. And they think he's dead. And then this big shootout. And Susan, he, uh, Eric murders everyone. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> because he, he's, he's killed about half the people in, uh, these, uh, these, uh, goons or whatever. And he's kind of halfway through and he's like, you're all gonna die. And it's, uh, and then he, you know, he just destroys everybody. And, um, I really like the scene when he, um, you know, skanks the last guy alive. And he picks him up, and he's like, oh, Skank. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not Skank. That guy, that guy's Skank over there. He's dead. He's trying to play, <laughs> yeah, and play he's it like, off. Oh, no. Um, and he's like, oh, um, he he basically says, oh, yeah, you're you're right. And he yeah. throws him out the window yeah. to his death, which yeah. I thought was cool. And one of the things I really liked, too, was the, uh, how he had the ability to kind of, um, because the, the, the officer who... Um, who he's kind of in contact with throughout the movie, he uh, breaks into his house and he, the officer ends up telling him, you know, I was with, I was with her the entire time, you know, all the way up until she died, basically. And then he uh, he puts his hands on on the the cop's head and he basically sees the um, what he saw that a year ago, and then he kind of falls down and he starts crying and he's like, oh yeah. Um, he's like, you know, you stayed with her. He's like, thank you. He has a kind of psychic ability, Mm -hmm. too, where he can kind of view, uh, he can see people's memories. Yeah. And he's he's just like, thank you. Um, thank you for that or something like that. And then he kind of just like leaves. And, um, I really like his, his kind of a, that vanishing ability that he does where he, you know, it, for me, it really reminded me a lot of old school, like um, the animated series uh, Batman, mm-hmm. when the Commissioner Gordon's talking to to Batman, and he, he turns, turns around, around and he's gone. Yeah, and it's you know it's a classic Batman type of thing to do, and uh, or he just goes around a corner and he's disappeared, and um, you know he they they play on that a lot. Throughout the movie, where he kind of just disappears, like you take a, you take your eye off of him, and he's gone. You look back, and he's nowhere in sight, mm-hmm. which I thought was really cool. And that's kind of that makes him that more, much more uh, 
mysterious and supernatural how some you know how he can just vanish mm -hmm. which I think is a really cool um, trait that they gave him I don't know if that's what he can do in the the comic book or the graphic novel but um, yeah I thought that was really cool well and they do um, they do little things like uh, when he goes and he attacks the pawn shop uh, owner mm. uh, in the, early in the film mm -hmm. He, when he gets into the shop, he does this thing where the guy looks away to grab a pistol and he turns around and uh, Eric's hanging upside down and yeah. it was just a split second. Yeah. So it's almost like he can, Super speed. he can do whatever he, yeah. he wants. He defies gravity, which I, I thought was cool. There's a lot of um, little hidden things there, mm -hmm. like traits that you, uh, you don't probably see until you watch it more and more. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It's pretty cool. I actually have an interview queued up. It's the last ever interview from Brandon Lee. Oh, nice. Basically talking about why he wanted, why he picked the role, what uh, what the crow means to him. Okay. It's just like a little bit of uh, insight onto like his uh, his interpretation of everything. Okay. You want to check it out? Hell yeah. Let's do it. The crow in the film, the bird in the film, you could really just look at as a guide, almost a piece of his own personality that guides him back into his life and reminds him who he was, what happened to him. is a person who has been pushed right to the limits of his ability to cope with what is going on and in a sense is quite mad sometimes in a sense is completely insane almost in the sense that you might think of an insane person having voices you know uh, more rational voices that uh, try and guide him uh, more irrational voices that come from a more emotional more deep-seated place i think that the crow is that rational voice the crow is his guide the crow helps Eric do what he has to do in a very practical sense. It leads him to the places that he has to be. It helps him find the people that he has to find. Come on. It's a story about justice for victims. Each one of these is a knife. The life you helped destroy. His mission is to find the man who killed him and his fiance and kill them. Gentlemen! I just want him. It's a wonderful role, and it, it really is a role that you have to take risks with, and it gives you a wonderful opportunity to take those risks and stretch because you tell me how somebody who comes back from the dead is going to behave, you know? Remove your dead. And I say I'm dead, and I move. And that's one of the wonderful things about playing this character is it's a real, you can really take the gloves off in playing this part because there are no rules about how a person who has come back from the dead is going to behave. Listen, you remember, you killed him. can't be you. We put you through the window. There ain't no coming back. And then there's the part of him that is filled with rage towards what was done to him. And one of the things I like best about this movie is the fact that all of those parts of the character are given balance on the screen. He's torn up. He's torn up really badly, emotionally, physically, and psychically. She uh, died at the hospital. I saw her through your eyes. I think that the appeal of Eric's mission is that it is a very pure one. He has come back 
to seek justice. I've done other films that have had uh, violence in them, but I must say I've never done anything where I felt that the violence was as justified as it is in this. There's very little need to worry about compassion of the victims. Aren't we all? This is justice, you know? And I truly feel that it is. And I truly feel that if I were in the same situation, I would do the same thing. He has something he has to do, and he's forced to put aside his own pain long enough to go do what he has to do. To tell the rest of them death is coming for them tonight. This film deals with the concept of a balance being struck between good and evil. I gave this to Shelley once. I think she'd like you to have it. Because we do not know when we will die, we get to think of life as an inexhaustible well. And yet everything happens only a certain number of times, and a very small number, really. How many more times will you remember a certain afternoon of your childhood, an afternoon that is so deeply a part of your being that you can't even conceive of your life without it? Perhaps four or five times more? Perhaps not even that. How many more times will you watch the full moon rise? Perhaps 20. And yet it all seems limitless. Little things used to mean so much to Shelley. I used to think they were kind of trivial. Believe me, nothing is trivial. This is the point of view that this character is coming from in the whole film, because it has been brought sharply into focus for him how precious each moment of his life is. I love you. Say that again. I love you. This is the best role that I've had the opportunity to get my hands on in a film. Boom. Dang. That's insane. Yeah. That's it, pretty... Uh, it gets pretty uh, emotional right there at the yeah, end. Yeah, it's, uh, like I was saying, kind of like a, a foreshadowing, maybe, of his own demise, which is... Well, this whole film kind of is. Yeah. Like the way he says the... When he goes and he sees the sergeant at his place, and he says, uh, "Nothing, like nothing is trivial. Nothing's trivial. Everything is." He's kind of remembering all the little things that Shelley um, kind of embraced, and he was like, "Oh, that's not a big deal." Yeah. But then once it's gone, or it's, gone. it's about to be gone, yeah. you're like, "Holy shit!" Like I didn't even pay attention. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's kind of like wake up and live your life, and and and, and he, he's super, uh, like, philosophical kind of uh, man. Like, uh, there's so many like crazy quotes quotes from his dad that you can uh, you know look up. Definitely. And I kind of feel like he inherited that type of um, outlook on life, or uh, you know, the meaning mm -hmm. of basically, which was it was. It was getting pretty deep when he's like, you know, how many more, you know, uh, how many more, how many more uh, times are you going to think back on childhood memory? Maybe three or four times, maybe not even that. And it's like, oh, shit. Because he's saying, yeah, he's saying you could not. You could die you, tonight. You could and, die in yeah. your sleep. Yeah. And you never wake up and then uh, you never see a sunrise. You never see the sunset again. But you, but all these things we take for granted. And so what he was saying is don't take things for granted. Yeah. Live every day as if it were your last, and uh, when that day comes, you'll be a lot more um, at peace. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Dang, <laughs> what <a> turn? <laughs> that's right. Um, but yeah, Deep. this is. I think this is a very fun movie. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I I'm glad I uh, I picked this one. Yeah, I'm glad we got to watch it. You should definitely check this out. I'm not sure. Is it streaming on Netflix? I know it was on Netflix it for a while. It was for a minute, yeah. Um, oh, dang, I don't know. I don't think it is anymore. Um, if it's not, just uh, if you don't already own it, um, rent it on uh, Amazon or yeah, any other Amazon streaming sites. iTunes, something like that. Whatever you have. Or uh, pick it up. Hard copy. Pick up a copy, yeah. I know they have uh, a sweet vinyl out. Yeah, they do. Everyone I've seen For it. the uh, soundtrack. Yeah. Check that out. It's got uh, The Cure. It's got Nine Inch Nails doing a Joy Division cover. It's got Stone Temple Pilots. 
bunch of a bunch of crazy stuff. Do they, have, do they have a uh, Blu-ray of this? Yeah. Do the they? Crow? Okay. Yeah. I've just never seen it. It has the. Um, I just don't think it's for some reason circulated out very much, okay. but they definitely do have a. Okay. a blue-